number 32. We are in the third quarter. Wow. We are in the third quarter. The year is moving fast. Time waits for no man. And so as we are in a new quarter, we are starting a new series, a new segment. Our theme for the year 2016 has been the year of connecting to people, to God, and to purpose. Now we are going to be spending the next three months talking about connecting to our purpose. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. So we're going to spend the next three months talking about connecting to your purpose. And this month we're starting a series called I have purpose. Clear that. I have purpose. I have purpose. Say it like you believe it. I have purpose. I have purpose. And today we're going to kick this off with a very powerful word. And I pray that it will transform your life in terms of your purpose. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 32. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him, him being Goliath. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant keep, kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. Will he deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine? And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So far, the text. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I pray, Father, that as we go into your word, you will open our ears that we may understand and our hearts that we may receive the living word. I pray, God, that you would anoint your servant. Take my mind, take my intellect, my studies, my experiences, and my passions. Use them all to communicate your word with power, authority, and clarity. Let the words on the pages of this book come alive for your people today. Give them something that they can hold on to that can change their very reality. We thank you for the anointing that breaks yokes. And we thank you for what you're going to do in this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus, oh, yeah. thank you, God. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat. Good morning to all of those on Facebook Live and on Periscope as well. This morning, or this afternoon rather, I want to talk from the theme, The Giant That Called Me Into Destiny. Right. The Giant That Called Me Into Destiny. If you are sitting here today... That means that you have a purpose for being alive. Before anything was made, before there were trees, before there were skies, ocean, in fact, before there was even the earth, God already made a determination about who you would be and what your purpose in the earth would be. One of my favorite passages that discuss that is found in Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 2, the letter of Paul to the church of Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 2 and chapter 1. Well, it tells us that we have been chosen, selected, predestined in the Father before the foundations of the earth. Yeah. The biggest challenge for many Christians, however, is finding out what that purpose is. One of the things that helps me to understand purpose is found in the Westminster Catechism. And the first question of the Westminster Catechism is, what is the chief aim of man or the chief end of man? And the answer to that question is, the chief aim of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him 
forever. I love that definition because it gives us two parts of purpose. The first part is to glorify God. Now, how do we glorify God? We glorify God by living on purpose, finding why God put us here and getting busy making that thing manifest to the glory of God. So when we live on purpose and we live according to the word of God, we are bringing glory and honor to our father. That's why the Bible says that we want people to see our good works and glorify our father, which is in heaven. But the second part of that is to enjoy him forever. And so that means that not only enjoy him while we're living, but how many of you all want to enjoy him when we leave this place? Amen. I was at a funeral this week and the old man said, when the gates swing open. <laughs> I'm going to walk in. And so how many of you all know that you're living to live again? You're living so that when you leave this place, you can go and live eternity with God. However, two of the biggest challenges that I find with most Christians is that they do not know their purpose. They're alive. They're breathing. They're living. You're working. You're paying bills. But if I was to ask you, why are you here? Besides from those things, the average Christian could not tell you. But the other part of that is most Christians, like we just said, you're living to live again. So for you, you're just going through life so that you can get to heaven. But God didn't put you here for 60 years, 80 years, 30 years just to go to heaven. Oh, I know I can get more help than that. God put you here to make an impact in the world. He put you here to make a difference. You might say, who me? What kind of difference can I make? You don't know where I come from. and You don't know what I deal with. I don't care where you come from. I don't care if you grew up in a gunshot house with the toilet outside. And I don't care if you grew up in the projects. I don't care if you grew up in a mansion or if you grew up in a home and had your own room. It don't matter if you know how to read. Don't matter if you don't have a job. Don't matter if you have education, no education. It don't matter if you're well. Don't matter if you're sick. It don't matter if you got money or if your account is in the negative or you don't even have a bank account. It don't matter if you have a purpose. You are here to make a difference in the world. I don't care if it's only with the small group of kids you keep every week. I don't care if it's on your job, being the source of inspiration to the people that come to your job. I don't care if it's being a light in your community. Whatever it is, you have a purpose. I dare you to look at two people and say, I have a purpose. Don't let life and let the enemy make you feel that you're insignificant and that you don't have a reason for being alive. And don't let the enemy beat you up because of your mistakes. If you are still alive, that means that God has covered over your mistakes and he has covered over your mistakes. So that means you need to get yourself together. Tell somebody to get your life, baby. You need to get your life and you need to get engaged in the purpose that God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Come on, give God a praise. I feel his presence. Because I feel in my spirit that so many people are living under a cloud. And I was talking to Pastor Douglas yesterday, and she's like, Bishop, how do, we, how do we activate our purpose and activate our covenant? And the reason that many people are under this cloud because you don't know who you are in God. And because you don't know who you are and why you're here, you let your issues and your flaws and your, and your proclivities and the things that get you tripped up and what you don't know and what you don't have and what you haven't seen to lock you up and make you a prisoner just breathing with no purpose. But today I break it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I break the chain of shame off of your life. I break the feeling of insufficiency and inferiority. And I pray that God will show you today who you are in him, that you are royalty, that you are an heir of Christ and a joint heir with your, with your big brother, Jesus, that you are above and you are not beneath. You are a lender. You are not a borrower. You are the apple of God's eye. Your name is etched in the palm of his hand. He has good thoughts for you, not to hurt you, not to destroy you, but to bring you to an end. And I want you to know that it don't matter how hard the devil may be hitting you right now. It don't matter what you are facing. The fact that you're sitting in this place today is a constant reminder to the devil that you hit me, but it didn't work. I still have a reason to be here, and I have a purpose. And I wish I had a hundred people that throw their head back right now and praise God for the fact that you got purpose. Hallelujah. I got a purpose to be alive. 
And that's why every day I get up, I might feel like crap when I wake up in the morning, but I still put my feet on the floor. I might wake up and just want to put the covers over my head and go back to sleep, but I shake the covers off and I put one foot on the floor and I put the other foot on the floor and I drag myself to the bathroom. Oh, can you be honest? Some days you don't want to even get up, but some days I got to drag myself. And you know what's dragging me, Elder? It's the purpose of God in my life that causes me to get up and do what I don't feel like doing. You got to know, if you ain't got nothing else to live for, live for the fact that God put you here for a reason. Know that God put you here to touch countries and touch nations. And God has put you here to touch people's lives. So some days, the reason why you get up is because it's bigger than you. Amen. If your life is not bigger than you, then depression will lock you up. If your life is not bigger than you, then your financial situation will put you in depression. If your life is not bigger than you, then you will think that you have no reason to live. But when you realize that there's so many people that God has called you to touch in some way, it gives you the strength. It gives you the hope. It gives you the courage, hallelujah, to get up and keep on going when you feel like you can't. And so God has sent me here today to tell you that, in fact, the challenges and the struggles and the obstacles that come in your life that make you want to give up are oftentimes indicators to your purpose. God uses struggle and challenge and obstacles to reveal to you what your purpose. A lot of times when we have challenges, we want to run from it. We want to avoid it like it's the plague. But if you actually stop, and stop shaking at the challenge and the, and the fear of it and really look at it. You say, you know what? I know how to fix that. I know how to address that. Oh, I've dealt with something like that. Yeah. And so in these challenges, God begins to reveal to you purpose. All right. It is the oppositions and struggles that reveal to you why you are here. And we see that in the life of the first king of Israel who was Saul and then his successor who was King David. While it was in the heart of Saul to be the leader over his people, he never knew that a trip to go find his father's lost donkeys would be the very thing that brought him into being the king. That's why I tell people, and I write in my book, and you'll see it next week when it comes out, that we have to be careful how we judge our journey. A lot of times we misjudge what we're going through because it's struggles and it's challenges. And we had to climb up the rough side of the mountain and we don't have to struggle. We've been struggling and hustling all of our life to get to where we are. And so we think that maybe we did something wrong or we missed something or we feel like maybe God doesn't love us. or We feel like we are not moving fast enough. Am I talking to anybody today where you just feel like I'm not moving fast enough? My friends are zooming past me and I just feel like I'm doing nothing with my life. And every time I try to do something, it falls apart. And every time I try to move for three steps. I get pulled back seven and you just like scratching your head trying to figure out if God loves me and I am his child then why is my life so difficult why is the struggle so hard I want you to look at your struggle in a different way look at your struggle and say God I know this is hard and it's uncomfortable but what are you trying to teach me about my purpose and when you change your perspective then God can begin to reveal to you that this thing that seems difficult is actually going to be a setup to push you closer to where I want you to be. Saul didn't know that chasing donkeys was going to make him the king. I can imagine why he's out there running around in the field. He don't know where these stupid donkeys are and he's getting hungry and he don't know where he's at. He's ready to go home and he out here running behind some donkeys. And while running behind donkeys, he meets Samuel and his life is never the same again. I want to declare to you today that some of you all are on a dummy mission right now running behind some donkeys. You out here running around and you look stupid to yourself and everybody watching you think that you are a fool for be running around here and you doing this and you trying to start the business again even though it failed three times already. You try yesterday I married my cousin, her and her and her and her um Husband, they've been married before, and they say, we want to make it work. And people laughed at them, saying, y'all crazy for trying to get back together. I said, you know what? I applaud you for making the effort to get back together. Don't worry about what people say about you. People are going to laugh and talk at you for what you're doing. Forget them, people. They not God know how. And if you ain't got nothing to put in on this, then you can hit the road to the left, to the left. I don't want to hear none of what you got to say, because this is about me getting to what God has destined me to get. And so Saul chasing after donkeys, he looks like a king, 
but he doesn't have what it takes to be the king. But the prophet tells him you're going to have a prophetic encounter. And when you have this prophetic encounter, it's going to turn you into another man. And so God has the ability to give you what you don't lack. Some of you all are not moving in your purpose because you feel like you don't have what it takes. But let's be honest. What God has you here to do is oftentimes much bigger than you. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Trust me. Writing a book was much bigger than me. Right. Becoming a bishop at, at a young age is a big task to oversee other Ooh. churches and other pastors and other countries is much bigger than me. And sometimes you can sit down on the road of life because you don't feel like you're good enough and you don't feel like you have what it takes. I want you to know that if God calls you to do something, God will also give you what you don't have. God will make up the difference by his presence and by his power. Can I get a witness in this place that God has given you stuff that you didn't have? And by him giving you it by his spirit, it has given you the ability, it's given you the grace to go on to be what God wants you to be. But the challenge is this. Yes, God will make promises and God will show you where he's going to take you. God will even give you what you lack. But you have to walk in obedience. You have to walk in obedience to what God has said. This obedience to God's instruction will cause that same anointing and that same grace to shift off of your life. Saul was disobedient to an order by God to destroy an entire nation because he was too concerned about what the people was going to say. You know why some people can't be great? You too concerned about Negroes and white folk and his Hispanic folk, whatever folk you're listening to. Stop letting other people's opinion lock you in when God wants to set you free. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you were to ask someone today, why haven't you started the business? Why haven't you done your CD? Why haven't you wrote your book? Why haven't you started doing what God told you? Well, I'm afraid of what people are going to say. Or nobody will support me. Or how am I going to do it? See, you're giving God excuses when he already has given you everything you need by his spirit. All you got to do is step out by faith. And when you step out by faith, you activate the presence of God that he's giving you so that you can then receive the manifestation of what God has promised to you. So tell somebody, stop listening to all the naysayers. You need to crack up the peanut gallery and eat it. Some of y'all get that next week. Amen. So Saul in his disobedience Amen. lost the covering that came from the prophetic word that transformed him. But it also opened the door to the enemy to come in and attack Israel. Yeah. The Philistines, which was the ancient enemy of Israel, came in to attack because they heard. And I saw this in the commentary and those who saw it on Facebook Live the other day. They heard that Saul had lost his former glory. That means that he lost the secret of his strength. He lost the secret of what caused him to get victory. When you walk in disobedience, you uncover yourself. And you cause unnecessary enemies to come to your life. Some of you are going to hell because you caused it by your own disobedience. Everything ain't the devil just rolling up on you messing with you. Some stuff you brought on yourself because you wanted to do what you wanted to do. Uh, you were too concerned about what people thought to obey God. Now he's going to shift it off of you. Right. He's kept you in the position, but he's removed the anointing and the grace off of the position to function. And when you don't have the anointing and the grace on the position, you can't function. And now you got an enemy that you can't deal with because the grace and the anointing to deal with the enemies is off your life. Here comes the Philistines. All right, all right. You notice how your disobedience can affect everybody else? One man's disobedience affected an entire nation. You think, oh, I'm just going to do this little, little thing right here. This that's me and whoever I'm doing it with. No, your disobedience can impact your whole family, can impact your whole company, can impact your whole neighborhood. You are that valuable to the plan of God. Do you hear what I said? You are that valuable to the plan of God that your one act of disobedience can affect so many others. 
That's why. See, a lot of people say, well, you shouldn't sin because of fear of hell. Now, nobody wants to go to hell, but that's not why you shouldn't sin. You shouldn't sin because your life is so valuable and important in the plan of God that your consistent sin can cause the lives of other people to be affected. The same ones that you've been put here to impact, you can negatively impact by your disobedience. That's major. That's a different way of looking at living right, isn't it? Most of y'all living right because you don't want to go to hell. I don't blame you. I don't want to go to hell neither. Old say, say, those sanctified folks will say, I ain't going to hell, no, no. Hell is hot. Hell is deep. Hell ain't got no hope inside. I ain't going to hell, no, no. So I agree with the sanctified folks. I'm not going to hell neither. But that's not why you should live right. You should live right because you have a purpose that's connected to other people. But Saul forgot that. The anointing shifted off of Saul. And it shifts to his successor named David. Mm -hmm. Now, David is sent on a mission to check on his brothers who had gone behind Saul to fight against the Philistines. I want you to know that one man's disobedience can set the stage to push you into your destiny. Mm, that was so good. Mm -mm -mm. That was Campbell. Mm -mm, good. I said that another person's disobedience can set the stage to push you into your destiny. Now, we don't gloat in other people's failures and mishaps. No, we don't rejoice in that. But it is what it is. Some people disobey and they set the stage for you to move closer to where you need to get. Let's be honest. Some of you all, the reason why you got the job you got is because the person ahead of you was such a knucklehead and so evil on the job, they got pushed out of the way, and you were the next best thing. You were the best thing all along. They couldn't see it. But now that this fool gone, they recognize that not only are you the next best option, but you always been the best option. Oh, I ain't got nobody got that swag to say. You might be overlooking me right now, but best believe when God is ready for me, the stage will be set. And a lot of times the stage is set in the face of other people's disobedience. And so while all the men are out here looking at the Philistines, they see the chapping of the Philistines walking across in the name of Goliath. Goliath was nine feet tall, nine inches. Can you hear him? Roaring in the valley and shaking the valley. The Israelites shaking, saying, oh my God, I've never seen nothing that big in my life. <laughs> this man had big old helmet and big old armor on. He had a big old spear. And he's walking back and forth, pounding his spear, saying, send me someone to fight. Send someone that's able to match my reputation. Goliath had a reputation for beating people. Okay. Can you imagine how the armies felt? Sitting there fearful, not knowing what they're going to do. Some of you sitting fearful, looking at issues in your life. You have no idea how you're going to pay that bill. You have no idea how you're going to feed your kids this week. You have no idea how you're even going to get to work. Don't even got money to get to work. You have no idea how you're going to manage through this sickness. Have no idea how you're going to keep your house. Y'all mighty quiet. I know I'm talking right. You don't know how you're going to keep your family together. You got a giant marching around in your house. Marching around on your job, marching around in some of your minds is marching around, telling you that you defeated, telling you you're not going to make it. I want you to know that God sees the giant and God is about to send your deliverance. Ah, oh, I was, I was 75 people would have caught that by faith. I know Goliath is pounding in your life and walking around making threats against you in the army of God. But I want you to know that your deliverance is on the way. And as Goliath was walking around in the valley, here comes David to check on his brothers. Here we go again. He's thinking he's going to check on his brothers, but God is setting him up to move him closer to his destiny. I'm telling you.